Hey guys, thanks for stopping by the channel. In this video, we're going to be doing a review of SpaceX's Starlink High Speed Satellite Internet System. This is a long awaited video and I'm ready to get it done, so let's get right into it. This video will consist of a complete unboxing, install, and initial review of this system. This system will be installed in Northern Arizona in a remote location miles from the grid. Before we get into the unboxing, I want to go back to February of 2021. That is when I placed the $99 pre-order for the Starlink satellite system. The Starlink satellite system is relatively new and in high demand and SpaceX has been having a little bit of trouble keeping up with the demand of orders. It has taken exactly one year from the time I placed my pre-order to receive my satellite package. However, as time goes on and production increases, it should take less and less time for you to receive your box after placing your initial pre-order. Now let's go over the dimensions. This box is roughly 24 inches long, 10 and a half inches tall, and 14 inches wide. The box weighs approximately 20 pounds. Now let's get into the unboxing. All right, guys, you ready to see what's inside? I am. Okay, initially, we have this hard stock kind of paper slash cardboard piece with the Starlink logo on it, right here in the center. It has nothing else on it. So, we're gonna set this aside. Then you have this molded plastic piece, which I'm assuming holds everything in its box securely. And we're gonna set that aside. All right, as I was hoping, we did receive the latest satellite dish. I'm not really sure what to call it because it's not round, it's not a dish, but I'm gonna call it a satellite dish for the purpose of this video. On top of that, we have a simple ground mount stand. And here is the dish. Okay, so the front of this thing is completely flat, completely flat. All right, let's measure the dimensions of the dish. The dish is exactly 12 inches wide and 20 and one quarter inches tall. Okay, just below the dish is going to be this thin cardboard with a bit of a diagram on it. I don't know if you can see that. Pretty basic. Shouldn't be too difficult. I'm gonna set this aside. Below that is the new router. All the cables are already attached to the router and the dish. And there is a relatively large roll of cable wound up within the box here. I'm gonna set these down and pull this cable out and see what else is in the box.
Okay, at the bottom of this box is a large roll of cable. We also have the power cord for the router. I'm not currently sure of the length of this, but it should do the trick where I'm going to install it. Below that is a piece of paper with, it's a piece of paper with 27 different languages of regulatory notices, which I'm not going to read. And that's it. That's all that comes in the box. We're going to take a trip to northern Arizona to my remote property to get this installed. grid property in northern Arizona. I have roughly 48 acres of raw uh, wooded land with no utilities. Uh, the nearest utilities are in a town over that way which is about uh, about a 25 mile drive mostly of which is dirt road so um, no chance of getting uh, cable internet or any other kind of high-speed internet up here. Um, when I first bought the place, I couldn't even make a phone call on my cell phone. That's how bad, well, it's not bad. It's just, uh, there's nothing out here and there isn't very good signal for data. Um, currently, I have a cell phone signal booster right over here, which I'll go ahead and show you what that looks like real quick. Um, that allowed me to be able to make phone calls up here from my phone and mild data connection as well through my phone. Um, but I, uh, couldn't, couldn't stream anything, couldn't upload any, any kind of video from here or anything like that. So I went ahead and got a Verizon jet pack and I'll show you what that looks like. Now that cost me $65 a month. <clears throat> it's unlimited data and it receives signal from the cell phone signal booster and then it projects it out as Wi-Fi. Um, it doesn't work very well up here. There just isn't enough signal, data signal coming from the nearest cell tower to really be able to do much with it. Sometimes I can stream a little bit of Netflix or, or YouTube, but um, I cannot really upload videos from here. It just, uh, it would take uh, like almost a day to do it. So not really feasible. Um, it's, it's worked okay for the last few years, but it's time for an upgrade. And that is why we have Starlink. So I'm going to turn you around and show you what I want to do with it. Okay, so I have a very small I don't know what you want to call it, tiny cabin um, that I built about six years ago, give or take. Um, it's not finished, um, it's just roughed in, but um, this is where all of my connections, uh, 
internet, all that stuff. That's where all that's going to go. And that's where the Verizon Jetpack is currently. Um, now, I'm plan on mounting the Starlink dish right up here. I don't know if you can see it. Right up there at the top above that little window right there. Um, I originally, I wanted to put it on the other side of the building on the back. I'm going to end up putting a wood stove in here and there's going to be a chimney that goes out the back there. And I don't want the uh, satellite dish anywhere near that chimney. So I guess I'm going to have to put it up here at the front of the cabin. Now, um, the box does not come with um, anything to connect it to a building and, and extend it above the roof line. They do sell something like that at, at Starlink. Um, I ordered one. It's like $40, $45. Um, but for whatever reason, it's taken quite a long time for them to ship it. And I just don't want to wait. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to do as a interim solution just to get it up away from my, uh, above the roof so it can move around freely and have no obstructions. Okay, so I went on Amazon and I was looking for basically a swivel mount for a satellite dish, uh, usually for like TV services. I've used them before out here for my solar, um, solar panel setup over here, um, but I couldn't find one quite the right size to mount to the dish. Originally, I, uh, I purchased this. I don't know if you can see it very well, but uh, it's, it's swivel. it'll mount like this and it'll swivel up and down, ideally up above the roof line. Problem is, is I didn't get the right size and this was too small. Um, so I can't really use this for this application. I did go ahead and get this one right here. It's quite a bit larger, um, heavier duty, and a much bigger diameter for the, uh, the pole. Um, I didn't check it, but unfortunately, the uh, dish, the uh, pole on it it, it, it just fits inside of this, but it's not, uh, it's not snug by any means, so I'm gonna have to modify this to make it work and what I'm going to end up doing is cutting some slits down the sides of this probably in in uh, four different spots just so I can get this to flex a little bit and and uh, clamp up um, clamp onto the pole that comes off of the dish okay so this is what I came up with it's not the greatest but as you can see I cut some grooves around it and I thought I had a a hose clamp that would work but I don't but I found two hose clamps that are small and I linked them together and I'm going to use that to squeeze this around the little pole that comes off the dish on the Starlink satellite so let's see if it works okay something interesting to note you have two ends of the cable that go from the dish to the router the skinny one is most likely going to be the end that you feed through your wall or however you get it inside your house to the router. But this end plugs into the dish. I don't know if you can see it, but this little pole that comes off the dish. The skinny one slides right into the end of it here. and clicks into place and there's a little button. There's a little button right here. I don't know if you can see it. You push that to release the, uh, the cord from the, the pole. This larger end of the cable, it's kind of an odd shape to it. This is the, the end of the cable that plugs into the router. The great thing about this cord being removable is that I can now slide this right up through here without any issues. Comes out the other end and it'll plug right into the dish. You'll want to make sure that you put this through the wall from the inside to the outside before you plug it into your dish and, and mount your dish because this is the smallest, the smallest diameter 
rather than having to drill a huge hole to put this in through your wall, this is much smaller. It'd be easier to fit this through a smaller hole. Okay, so now I'm gonna get to drilling a hole in my wall and mounting the uh, swivel arm to mount the dish to and then start running my wire. Okay, the hard part is done. I've got the dish mounted. I've got to tighten a couple things up there, uh, mainly the, the hose clamp. Um, it's, it's pretty tight, but I want to get a little bit more tight. Um, I've got the, the wire, as you can see, just dangling down here, and it's going through the wall. Um, right now, I'm gonna go ahead and hook it up to the, uh, the modem, get on the app, and see if I can get a signal. And then uh, I'm gonna tidy up all the, the, the wire underneath my, uh, basically my drip edge on the roof there, all the way down to the uh, corner trim on the corner of the building. Run it down and, and, and pull the rest of the cord through, clean it up, make it look nice. And then I'm gonna throw some caulking in the hole on the side of the wall. They actually sell a through the wall, I don't know what you call it, a grommet or something that's made for that. Um, I might get one in the future, but right now I'm just, I'm just doing it, uh, you know, old school, right? Um, I'm going to put some caulking in there, seal it up, and uh, we should be good to go. Um, once I figure out the app, I haven't really explored it. You can't really do anything with it until you have your dish. But once I get familiar with it and make sure everything's working, I'll run through everything with you guys. Okay guys, we got it all plugged in, turned on, and it's working. Um, initially when I plugged it all in, within like a minute or two after plugging it in, the dish above the building here, it rotated absolutely flat. And it, was, it stayed that way for a couple of minutes. Um, and then it started to rotate and it found the satellite up in orbit. So now it's, it's facing well, this doesn't help you for reference, but it's facing out that direction from the corner of my, my roof there. Um, so I'm going to show you what I have been working with for the past few years and what I've used. Okay, so I've been using this jet pack right here, which is on. That's how I get my data up here. And um, I basically have a, a router here which I've hacked to accept the Wi-Fi signal from this as the signal in, so I have the ability to use ethernet for my surveillance system, okay? But this is what I've been using for the past few years, and I'm gonna run a speed test, and I'm gonna show you guys what kind of speeds I'm getting off of that. You're gonna be surprised. Okay, so I'm gonna run over here to speed test. So I'm gonna hit go. I don't know if you can see it. You can't really see it, it's the, it's not really focusing, sorry guys. Focus. How's that? You see my download speed? 1.84. My upload speed, 4.95. We're gonna do it one more time. Cause that's even a little low for my download speed out here. I usually get like three or four. Okay, a little better that time, not much. That's it, it's about, eh. 
Yeah, that's about what we're getting right now with the uh, Verizon jetpack. It's terrible, absolutely terrible. I don't know if you can see the ping on there. 162, the jitter is 48. Now we're gonna switch over to Starlink and see what we get on there. Okay guys, give me a second. I'm gonna close speed test. Go into my Wi-Fi settings. And I'm gonna connect to Starlink. All right, we're connected, let's take a look. So, SpaceX Starlink, go. You guys see that? 161 down. The up is a little slow, but it's way better than what I've had. Way, way better. Look at that, that's crazy. Huge difference, guys, huge difference. There's a lot more I can do with those kind of speeds. Unbelievable. Can you guys believe those kind of speeds? I would have never thought it was gonna be that high. I was expecting between, like right around 90 to 100 megabits download. Never thought it was gonna reach 160. That is insane. I don't know if it's the generation two dish that gets you the better speeds or not. I have no idea, but that's, that's amazing. And man, what a difference it's gonna make around here. I'm gonna be able to upload videos right here from the property. Um, FaceTime with family, whatever I want to do. My wife can come up here and work because she works online. Um, that's crazy. That is crazy. Anyways, I'm going to get all this stuff cleaned up, buttoned up so it looks nice and neat and tidy. And then uh, when we're all done, I'm going to show you the finished product. Okay, it is the next day. Um, everything's all installed, cleaned it up. You almost can't even tell there's any wire there. Um, looped the wire down, went up close as I could to the, the drip edge on the roof there and just ran it along down, down the trim, underneath the building. And right up in the side, right there. I wanted to give it about a day uh, with all the crazy wind that we have here right now, you probably can't tell, but it's been blasting. I wanted to see if that uh, dish was going to wiggle its way out of that swivel mount that I put up there. And it hasn't. It hasn't even, I haven't seen it move in the strongest of wind gusts that we've had up here since yesterday. So, pretty confident it's not going to go anywhere between now and the time I come back. But, uh, been working pretty darn good guys I'm not kidding really good that uh, that Wi-Fi router that comes with it it is so strong that it is able to penetrate the siding on my trailer and I've got unbelievable speeds inside there from my computer uh, my laptop um, my cell phone my fire stick all of them have no problems connecting and I'm streaming high def so Pretty amazing, pretty amazing. I'm gonna tell you that right now, it's, it's unbelievable. Um, okay, so, sorry guys, the wind is really killing my allergies right now. So once I plugged it in, it's pretty simple. You plug it in, um, you go to your app, it, it tells you to go to your Wi-Fi settings on your phone. Um, Starlink pops up in your Wi-Fi selection you just tap on it and you instantly have internet it's it was that fast it was that fast and uh, it'll ask you if you want to rename the uh the wi-fi and you know you do you add a password and all that stuff R real simple stuff um and that was it it was done now i don't know if they had it on the the first generation of the dish 
and router. But on this one, Gen 2, you have the ability to go into the app and turn off the uh, snow melting feature on the dish. There's actually a little heat coil in that dish that if uh, activated in the app, it'll sense that it's got ice or snow on it and it'll turn on and melt the ice or snow. But it's gonna use quite a bit more electricity. And when you're on solar, like I am, you don't wanna, you don't wanna burn through all that, especially at night. If it was during the day, it wouldn't be a big deal, but at night, you know, you don't wanna go through all that electricity. So I turned it off. Uh, we still might get some snow here in the next couple of months, but I don't think it's gonna be a problem. Um, you wanna see how much power it, it consumes? Let's go check it out. I've got it hooked up to a kilowatt meter. Can you see that? 51, 52 watts. That is what is it is using right now. That's nothing. That's that's literally nothing, especially for me with a smaller solar system back here. That's that's nothing. Um, totally doable. So that's that's better than I was expecting. I I was watching videos on the first gen system and they're saying it was like 90 between 90 and 120, 30 watts, something like that. This one's using 50 some watts. Totally doable. That's like a that's like a TV, you know, a flat screen TV, a smaller one, or or your laptop. Uh super, super uh stoked about that very little power so that's cool all right guys so what i'm going to ask you to do is if you have found any value in this video whatever the unboxing the basic basic uh rudimentary install i did or the performance of the uh, system if you have any find any value in this video please please consider subscribing to the video and most importantly give it a thumbs up if you would try to get this channel off the ground but that's pretty much it i mean i can't think of anything else i need to go over with you on the system um, if you guys are interested in doing what i did and getting that little swivel mount You'll have to make a modification like I did, but it wasn't that difficult. And you want a pretty good hose clamp up there. But it works, and it's much cheaper than what they sell on the Starlink website that pretty much does the same thing. Um, this was half the price on Amazon. If you're interested in that, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put that in uh, below the video, a link to that on Amazon below the video you can get one um, so uh, any questions or comments please leave them below and I think that's gonna do it guys so um, I'm pretty impressed with Starlink so far we'll see what happens like I said this is just an initial review um, over the long term we'll do another video and uh, see how it performs through all the elements and over time so you guys take care Stay safe, see you in the next video. Hey guys, I'm gonna jump in here real quick. Um, literally one day after recording this clip here, my buddy, he went ahead and signed up with Starlink and looks like they've updated their pricing. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a, a shot of what he got in his email. Just to let you know, they've raised their prices just a little bit.